The Speaker's announced policy of January 3rd, 2017. The gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Clark, is recognized for 60 minutes as the designee of the minority leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the subject of this evening's special order. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this evening, the Congressional Progressive Caucus is going to be sharing some thoughts with the American people about this extremely horrible zero tolerance policy that uh, Mr. Trump has subjected our nation to. So I want to thank the speaker once again, and I rise today in opposition to the administration's cruel and inhuman, inhumane zero tolerance policy at the border that has resulted in the separation of more than two thousand children from their families and their loved ones. This policy calls to mind the worst of our history, including the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, our refusal to grant safety to Je Jewish refugees during the Holocaust, and the treatment of Africans who were brought here as chattel slaves during and throughout the Middle Passage. Unlike what the administration says, this policy is not required by law. And I think that has been made plain to all Americans. It is not President Obama's doing. And I think that has been made plain to all Americans. And it is not in any way justified by the Bible. In fact, as a Christian, someone who grew up in the church, I know that these very same verses were falsely used to justify four centuries of chattel slavery, and that the Bible teaches us to welcome the stranger and to beware of spiritual wickedness in high places. So don't be deceived. This policy of choice is solely the result of a racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-family values agenda adopted by this administration to intimidate immigrants of color seeking asylum from violence and persecution for their own political gain. The administration, the Trump administration, has also sought to avoid responsibility for by cowardly claiming that no such policy exists, as Secretary Nielsen claims in a reply to my March 20th letter, and then reiterated more recently via twi Twitter. More lies and deception. However, when 2,000 children are separated from their families, many of whom have been dispersed across this nation as a result of a decision made by the Trump Department of Justice, a policy of depravity indeed exists. But that's not all. Children are now, as I've stated, being shipped all across this nation, including to New York City, where there are currently at least 239 children being detained just a few miles from my district and thousands and thousands more who are miles away from their caregivers. Yesterday, Donald Trump finally gave way to public pressure by signing an executive order that he claims will end this horrific policy. Unfortunately, he did so by abrogating his responsibility under the Flores Agreement to release children without unnecessary delay and to keep those who are in custody under the least restrictive conditions possible. This means that children will be detained with their families, which is also unacceptable. Unfortunately, this body 
too, is neglecting its responsibility to the American people by debating the most restrictive immigration bills that ignore past commitments to DREAMers, end the diversity visa lottery program, and will build an unnecessary and ineffective border wall with Mexico. To add insult to injury, Republicans who control every branch of government blame Democrats for their failure to legislate and offer these regressive dead on arrival bills as solutions to problems that they themselves have created. So tonight I call on this administration to stop playing politics with immigrant lives and on my Republican colleagues to pass meaningful immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform that not only protects dreamers, protects individuals who are under temporary protected status and stops separating.